Hey, what's happening, you one? I am Sir James from GamerFusion.com, and we're here to continue on in my walk. But I have gone and this talked to a girl like Selena in the world of a game known as White Knight. Probably not. So if you guys not. have any questions along our way, don't forget like to leave them in the comment section down below. So let's go ahead and here, get this started. I was a moth, and in her light, I was seeing the beginning and the end of all things.
scent of blood in the air. It was hers. Anger was growing in me, thinking about William stabbing her with a blade. But it wasn't over yet. Oh no. I was going to save her. It didn't matter where the wolf would hide. I would skin it. New scents started filling the air again. Sea spray, moist soil, plants. Soon after, I could hear rain and thunder. She had guided me on the way out. She had saved my life. But as all prisoners know so well, you're not free just because you can see the sky. This was just another setting for the same tragedy. She was inviting me to follow her. Come, come see, she was telling me. It was her best part. The victim plays her role to cheat death. 
But she wasn't deceiving anyone. And me, even less. Conscientious diva, Selena walked to her grand finale. My fear was washed away by disgust. I was about to meet William. Killed the only beautiful thing in the world. The only one which could save me. I'm sorry. It was me all along, Selena. The son of a bitch. The sicko. The killer. The wolf. The filth. The bastard. The scum. Oh, you should have let your mother kill you. You should have undone what she did. You knew, and yet you let me have a second chance, Selena. Let me go on till the end. Memories of what I had done were coming back slowly. Like the tide washing ashore the rotten corpses from a wreck. Selena was lighter than a pillow. The real weight was all those years of filth stored in my memory. Images. The blade I sunk deep into the stomach of my own mother. Those dark-haired women. Those hated clones of Margaret, split from head to toe as a sacrifice to the moon. Their organs displayed carefully, like some child fresco. Selena on the stage of smoke and mirrors. The glass I used to toast with her. The first time we talked. Her tears. The letters in which she told me about losing her kid. How her husband had been murdered. And our kiss. The blade I used to stab her. My father and the father of my mother died from the same madness. The same poison that men injected into the economic system they had created. On October 29th, 1929, millions of casualties. The scent of blood. And for the wolves, the beginning of 
the hunt. Selena's warmth was pulsing slowly in my arms, as the dark spot of my culpability was growing over her stomach. In the sky, the moon was watching me, her son, as I was taking my first steps, holding her daughter in my arms. A resurrection. A second chance. Selena was dying. I could tell from her body, tightly pressed against me. At times her eyes would open and stare at me, not a hint of anger or accusation. She could have let go, let her light pass, let my mother take me back. But she was protecting me. Forgiving me. The moon was silently watching us as we made our last push through the night. Soon, dawn would come. The sun would wash away all that ink which had condemned us. Goodbye, Luna. Goodbye, Mother. This night had been too long already. In nature, Forgiveness is part of a whole. It's part of a cycle, of a time frame, of harmony. We had been waiting long enough. I was trying to keep Selena warm as best as I could while she was holding on to my hand. Selena had never really been a part of this world. The full moon was coming to take back one of her lost rays. I was watching her go, wondering if I would ever see her again. Probably a matter of cycle. I could wait. And it was a pretty night. <laughs>